Hello and welcome back and today is one of those videos that I've been waiting a long, long, long time to talk about. Today I finally want to talk about a Thunderbolt 3 PCIe upgrade card from QNAP. That's right, it is something we've banged on about on this channel since the beginning, ever since QNAP first unveiled their Thunderbolt series of devices in the TVS 871T, which seems like a million years ago now. It's been several generations, and one of the biggest, biggest, biggest requirements and requests from a number of users was the ability to upgrade their existing systems with Thunderbolt 3. The ability to add a PCIe upgrade card to their NAS and use their existing system with their existing data and their existing CPU and memory and all that architecture, but then bolt on Thunderbolt 3. Now, there are good things in this video, but I'm gonna get straight out of the way and get the nastiest ripping plaster moment out of the way early doors. It looks like at the moment, this PCIe upgrade card is listed for compatibility on one family, the 88X series that we've talked about on the channel very, very, uh, I think it was like mid-September. This video is hopefully going live a day or so after that original video. Now, that might be because the architecture of Thunderbolt and the CPUs it will work with, which I'm going to touch on later in the video, or it could simply be that this card is so new that they've not really tested it across the majority of the range. I'm kind of inclined to think it's more the first than the second one there, but we'll get back onto that later on. But yeah, I just wanted to rip that plaster off early doors and discuss that. So, Straight away, this is the QXP T32P. It is a two-port Thunderbolt 3 upgrade card. They both utilize, of course, USB-C, and this PCIe upgrade card from QNAP utilizes PCIe Gen 3 times 4 So plenty of speed there to play with. Again, that's an 8,000 megabytes per second a plus throughput PCIe connection, which again, with Thunderbolt being a theoretical maximum of 40 gigabits per second per port, you've got that bandwidth available on that PCIe connection. Now, it does have its own uh, controller built inside to take care of the Thunderbolt, so it's not going to be overly reliant on the um, chipset of your existing NAS. And it's the JHL6540, um, and that's part of the Intel J6000 um, series of Thunderbolt controllers. And again, I did read that off camera. You can't really expect me to remember everything. But what I will say is that business I touched on earlier on about the compatibility with the CPU is very, very important. Anyone that's ever utilized a Thunderbolt system, and I'm particularly talking to you Thunderbolt users who are Windows uh, laptop users like myself, uh, predominantly, uh, Thunderbolt is not only a very hungry beast in terms of power uh, and general throughput, it also is quite graphically demanding as well. And you will notice if you are doing tasks that involve any kind of rendering or any kind of high graphical maintenance uh, of the system, um, Thunderbolt generally has an impact on there. Whenever I've done videos that use a 10GBE to Thunderbolt adapter like the Solo 10G or the QNAP range of Q&A adapters, You'll always find that if I use video editing, I have to add that disclaimer that it can impact recording quality. And that's because Thunderbolt needs quite a bit of GPU, weirdly. And that's one of the reasons Thunderbolt is so great for big high-end monitors and docks and stuff like that. So a CPU that can take care of things with embedded graphics is kind of a necessity in some regards. Now, the range of NAS is that this card is currently uh, available in terms of compatibility and support with is that 88 um, series. Now that arrives with a Xeon, but it's one of the few generations of Xeon I've seen in NAS, particularly in 2020, that does actually have embedded graphics. Typically, most Xeon processors, you know, up until you hit the real, real high ranks, don't have um, any kind of GPU to back them up and they use raw power. This one, the 1250W, this Xeon is a six core on that system, the 88X that's currently been revealed in desktop and I'm assuming Rackman is only around the corner. Um, it means that that CPU seems to bring what this Thunderbolt card requires to keep things moving. And um, this card, again, has the throughput on the PCIe. It's got the two PCI, uh, sorry, the two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports on the on the card itself. It's got two backplanes there for large and small profile, which would suggest, again, that rack mount compatibility. 
Um, and on top of that, it is worth highlighting that these Thunderbolt ports cannot be used together. They are used for independent connections, just like the other Thunderbolt series of devices where um, two users could interact with a storage system, each with their own independent uh, Thunderbolt connection, each of which being able to edit big files on the NAS system. Now, we don't have a price, we don't have availability, we barely have an image, with the image on screen, I believe, being uh, the PCIe card that is utilised in the XT or the 82 series, but the card is going to be largely identical that I'm uh, to that, I am sure. Um, there's no word on PC compatibility. There's very little information at this stage that we can ascertain from this. A lot of the information we're getting at the moment is kind of off the back of the 1288X and the 1688X reveal that we talked about a few days ago, at least at the time of the recording. Um, I am very, very interested in a couple of things about this card, and I'm sure you are as well. Number one is, is this PCIe card going to be exhaustively expensive, or is it going to be in line with the majority of the PCIe upgrade cards from QNAP? They've got a great range of upgrade cards that cover everything from caching um, and uh, 10 GBE in the QM2 series to improved ones with Wi-Fi 6 and their own range of 20 and 40 GBE cards and those 25 GBE fiber cards for fiber channeling and, and SAN environments. This card, I, I'm interested which one of those kind of price spectrums is it going to fit into because you know QNAP predominantly are the only brand out there that have um, Thunderbolt NAS systems there's a few anomalies out there there was that QSAN one that we talked about a couple of years ago that kind of disappeared a little bit there and we've seen uh, a new promise Pegasus Thunderbolt NAS on the horizon as well but predominantly it is largely QNAP based and they've invested a lot of R&D and other, in other words money into this area so it wouldn't surprise me if they capitalize on that premium I hope they don't but it wouldn't surprise me if they do because if the 88 series and QNAP devices that come later on are going to be optional Thunderbolt rather than creating a Thunderbolt and non-Thunderbolt version this car could be that difference and therefore its price point is going to be very important. The second thing I'm going to be interested in, of course, is compatibility. Is this card going to work with other systems? And if if systems, what are they? And of course, I'm going to be bench testing the hell out of this card when it arrives on different NAS platforms to see which ones work, if at all. And if is this a case of GPU support on a CPU or is it because you need a raw power CPU like a Xeon? I'll let you know as soon as I know. But otherwise, do visit the link in the description to go to NAS Compares where we're doing updated information on this card. And of course, visit the guys at Span.com to get your orders in as and when cards like this become available. And do check out my content on the 88X series. That's ZFS, Xeon powered, dual 10 GBE, triple tier monstrosity. That is really going to shake things up for mid-range storage users. But thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. And I will see you next time.